Hello, and welcome to Marine Science Cafe podcast. Today, I'm presenting a podcast where I'm talking with David, who is a well-established ecologist and a senior researcher at Aarhus University in Denmark. David has, from far, the most beautiful naturalist and researcher's office I have ever seen, with, of course, a lot of bird feathers and bird skulls, but also incredible things such as a polar bear skull or baleen from a whale. Just like some of the items that I have collected, such as this colus, which was collected in northeast Greenland, or this piece of wood that we collected in northeast Svalbard and that is actually eaten by mollusks, Every item in David's office has a story. And I was very lucky to be able to record David telling me some of these stories. So I really hope you enjoyed this discussion and let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Well, thank you, David, for, uh, yeah. Yeah, for yeah. being here and yeah. accepting to uh, answer my questions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and showing you my natural museum. Yes, so uh, your office, office, yeah, your yeah, office yeah, is yeah, a yeah, museum. Yeah. And I want you to give me a little tour later yeah, of your yeah, office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a polar bear yeah. skull there. Yeah. So uh, there's a bat there. There's a bat. Yeah. There is a, a freeze dried bat. Oh, yeah, a freeze dried bat. It is freeze dried. Yes. Wow. It's freeze dried down in our lab or in, in our lab. You know. Wow, that's really cool. It's yeah. not stuffed. No, it's not stuffed. No. It's freeze dried. Yeah. Wow. So I'm. Uh, mm. What 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 are you? I know yeah. you're you're a biologist. I'm a ecologist. biologist. Yes, and you're I'm an a, ornithologist. I'm, yes, and much more. I'm also working with fungi. And I'm, I'm, oh, fungi! Uh, and I work sometimes sometimes with uh, musk oxen and okay and bowhead whales. I have been working. So, with, so. you're 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 not specifically a marine biologist. No, I'm not. No, no, no. Or an or ornithologist or. I'm a real naturalist. You're yeah, an, yeah. a naturalist, and yeah. you have a naturalist yeah. office. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So it's, we are we are a rare breed. You are Natu really? naturalist today, you know. Yeah. Yes. And not man, not not that many left What's because uh... much most most people specialize much more in the biology today. So they work with DNA or yeah. genetics and whatever. Yeah. I'm I'm mostly interested in all what's around me, plants and everything. Animals and yeah. fungi and so on. What do you do I as a naturalist? I work with seabirds, in, in mainly in Greenland, mm -hmm. and uh, mainly with their distribution and their occurrence in, in the Greenland waters. Okay. And I also do surveys of uh, seabird cliffs and seabird breeding sites. Okay, yeah. so you're looking at the biology of the seabirds. Yes. Yeah. And, and you're an ecologist as yeah. well in the sense that you're looking at the general yes, picture. Yes, yes, yes. So you're looking exactly, at their yeah. diets, yeah. Yeah. you're yeah. looking at their yeah. behavior. Yeah. 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 yeah, okay. So when I was a kid, I wanted to be a naturalist. Yeah. Yes, that's what I would tell everyone. Yeah. When I grow up, I will be a naturalist. Yeah. And here I am. Yeah. A biologist. Yeah. Talking to a naturalist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Lately, you've been doing seabird work. Yes, I do. Mostly. Have to, uh, last summer, I went to Greenland to survey seabirds in the Greenland Sea. Yeah. And we surveyed from aircraft. Okay, and that's so, true. So, I know that. Yeah, I was on a boat while you, you were while exactly, you were doing exactly, that. Yes. We were communicating. Yes, yes, we were. Yeah. Unfortunately, we did not see the ship from the aircraft. We we did no. not pass each other. No. But we we worked in the same area. Yes. What was the idea with that research? Why was there a boat and an aircraft? Uh, it was to get a, a picture of the distribution of the seabirds, both seen from a ship. And from an aircraft, from yeah. an aircraft you can cover a much bigger area than you can from a ship. Mm -hmm. And from the ship you can also take samples of the um, uh, the marine biology. You can you mm -hmm. can uh, mm -hmm. uh, catch uh, plankton and study the f food items of the seabirds, yes. and, and map concentrations of seabird food and so on. So, why are you interested in studying seabirds? That's I've been interested in, in, <laughs> That's in birds. That's a silly question. <laughs> yes, because I've been interested in birds since I was a kid. Yeah. You know, I was running around with my binoculars when I was twelve years you old. You were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, uh, yeah, you yeah. were running around with binoculars yeah, yesterday. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, yeah. you haven't yeah. changed much. No. Nope. <laughs> so I um, really have a very nice job. Yeah. 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 But so the main reason, to... the main reason we worked up there is because that uh, there are um, uh, oil companies have been granted licenses in that area, and we are okay. doing the, so. The the work we do was background studies mm -hmm. for to see the the ecological uh, situation in, in that area before they yes. start their activities. Okay. Yeah. So you're you're mm -hmm. doing a survey to see yeah. what's there. Yes. Their biology, yes, and then or rep or or maybe migration patterns, exactly, yes, and yes, then yes. the oil yeah. drilling is going to happen. We don't know yet. Okay, they have so far they have only been doing uh, seismic surveys. Yeah, okay, but and they have not decided whether they will go on with the drillings yet. So how may that affect the birds? Uh, if, if it goes as we hope, it will then it will not affect the birds. But if we, they have some kind of accidents resulting in oil spills, oil, then, we, oil spill. then okay. we have a, a, a potential very serious situation. Yes. You know, also for the birds. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And these birds are, are they vulnerable because they're yes. Arctic birds? Mm. No, they're mainly vulnerable because they stay on the water surface where the yeah. oil is. And they have, the cold conditions, of course, makes them more vulnerable. To, 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 to oil spills. To oil spills and to, to cold conditions. Yeah. Yes, we, you know, when the oil hits the, the plumage, mm -hmm. the, the, it's, it will not be waterproof anymore and the, mm -hmm. the birds will lose heat very fast. Mm. And if the, the water is cold and the air is cold, they will die very quickly. Yes. But um, <laughs> as a species, are they, mm. are they vulnerable because they are in the Arctic? And you know, with climate change, there's, oh, yes. there's less some of ice. The, yes, yes. Some, of them are, them? Yeah, some of them are, especially uh, the species which are associated to the ice. You know, there's one called the ivory gull. Mm -hmm. You saw them from the The ship. ivory gull, yes. And it's specifically associated to, to drifting ice. In what respect? Because they feed in, in, in the areas where there are uh, drifting ice and they live from small crustaceans living on the, uh, on the ice, they look below the ice and they live from the remains from the polar bear kills and so on. Okay. And if the, the ice disappears, there will be no feeding grounds for the ivory gulls. So they, just like the polar bears, just they, like the they polar bears. need the ice exactly. in they order need to, the ice. to yes, feed. They do, yeah. do they nest on the ice? No, they do they... not nest on the ice, they nest on the... Um, on, on cliffs on the, on, okay. on the shores and they nest on low shores and on steep cliffs yeah. and they can nest on the ice because they when can. I because when I was surveying up there in 2008 mm -hmm. we found actually a colony of ivory gulls on an ice floe really? but the ice floe was covered with, with dirt yeah so it looked like a small island wow. and the ice floe was fixed of the fast ice yeah. so it, it was not moving around and yeah. they actually bred on the ice but how does an ice floe get covered with dirt? Because it, it was a piece of glacial ice and it was the, 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 the moraine from the ice which was left on, on top of this floe. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. It, it was, yes. Yeah. So they can actually nest on they the ice. They can nest on the ice yeah. in rare conditions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's quite funny. So how, I'm curious, I'm always curious as to how do, do people get into this field? Yeah. I mean, I know my yeah. story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a vague idea of yours because you said you were walking around yes, when you were 12 because, years old yes, with but binoculars. You know, <laughs> but you know, I, I can go much further back than when, when, yeah. when I was five or six years. I was interested in toads and jellyfish and whatever I was. I found on the yeah. beach, you know, and brought it back home yeah, and had you it could in catch. the bathtub and so on. <laughs> yeah. So you know. had your you already had your naturalist yes, office I, uh, when you were yes, had, when you yes, were a kid. I had, yeah, I had, yeah. <laughs> My father was very interested in in nature and so on, but he was not. Uh, he, he he was a, an architect, but he was very um, interested in in birds and whatever. He did not know the birds, but he he liked to get out and to to walk around in in the nature. So he awoke in this passion. He probably yeah, he probably did, yes. Yeah. yeah. And then what, what path did you take? You you just decided to go straight into biology? I did, yes. Yeah. 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 And there was no no I had no no whatsoever. What is it called? Hesitation. No doubts. No, no hesitation. Doubts. No doubts. No yeah. hesitation. Yeah. yeah. Wow, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> it was, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, so you did that <laughs> and you graduated and then you got a 
No, no, I did not get a job because uh, when I was graduated, the, 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 the job situation for biologists was very poor. So mm -hmm. I, I actually was unemployed for almost 10 years. Oh, okay. But I worked then as a consultant for the Ministry of for Museums and so on. I had few, yeah. had short uh, occupation. Short contracts. Short contracts, yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. And I also worked in with teaching and I worked in a, a, an office in one of the local, um, in the, one of the county uh, offices for nature preservation and so on. Wow, okay, yeah. really. So yeah. this is, a, that's really interesting because the job situation is... You think it's better now for biologists? I'm not sure, no. I'm not sure. It, it's no, not no, very, very no, good. No. Either. I graduated uh, almost two years ago now, yeah. and I've just been doing small yeah. contracts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I did it for 10 years. 10 years, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, yeah, eight more years to go, yeah. and it yeah. will be 10 years for me, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's um, it's unfortunate that we have to go through this. But then yeah. eventually you did... It, yeah. It's It's also crazy that you were hanging on to this yes, but passion of yeah, yours and yeah, you were able yeah. to live and now yeah, you're yeah. a well-established yeah, researcher exactly, but, it, yeah, yeah. but it took 10 years it of, took, yeah, yeah, yeah. but that's inspiring yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah because eventually you do end up doing what you want yeah, exactly yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i see you you see my polar bear yes yeah, i yeah, see yes, your polar yeah. bear yes that's a very interesting polar bear skull which was found by the the staff of one of the stations in northeast Greenland. Yeah. And when we arrived there in 2010, they told us there's a dead polar bear up there. It's mummified. And you can go and mummified. see. Mummified? It, it has been wow. there, laying there for... Let's get closer to it. For, for, several, for several years. And so we went up there to take samples from it. And then we took uh, also took the head. And when I then uh, made a skeleton of the head... How do you we, make we, a skeleton of, I, of a such I, a thing? I just put it in a bucket and let it macerate oh, for, for, mm, for, for a couple of months. It oh, must, it smelled very, it must very nice. Smell yeah, very yeah, it smelled very good. But then we discovered that the, the jaw was broken. Ah. It was completely broken. So do you think it... It had, had had some kind of infection here around the teeth. And it's probably... Uh, uh, It had a tooth infection. It has a, probably a tooth infection. Maybe it, it's, it's a wound from a, a fight with another male, I don't know. Uh, possibly. But it resulted in that the, the teeth in the opposite side was completely weared down. Yeah, you can Do you see think the, uh, the, the, it's it not has, because it's an old? Uh, it's not because it's an old skull. It's that's no, no, actually it's, how it's, it. This is actually how it was. Wow. Yeah. And I guess it has been too. Um, It has. Uh, it had got pain from from chewing with this side, you know, mm -hmm. because of this broken or or at least due to the infection. So the, it, it stops only, chewing with it, one it, side. It, it has only used this side for chewing and biting, and weird the teeth down to this compared to 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 those teeth here. That's and very then we, interesting. Then we brought it back, and uh, it had, we have it aged. It, it was 17, 17 years old. 17? Yeah, so that's a that fairly. Is that old? No, it's not fairly. It's it's not very old, but it's it's pretty old. How uh, how old do they live? 25. 25, Okay. Yeah. And it's a male. It's a big male. How big was it? I don't know because it was completely flat and mummified, so we couldn't uh, we couldn't uh, weigh it or we couldn't yeah. really measure it. But you can't. But you back can see. Calculate we can, with we the can see from the skull that it's a big one. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a very nice one. Yeah, this is. It's very interesting that you can actually tell that it had, uh, that it probably died of an infection. Oh yes, it died from this. Probably st uh, starved to death because starved, this has been yeah. too painful to 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 feed. So it happens that they starve to death from yes, natural yeah. causes. Oh, yes. Yeah. It, it happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Well, maybe you can show me other things in your office. <laughs> yeah, yes. We can, you can see here I have a collection of bird skulls up here. I have not prepared them myself. One, one of my good friends have prepared them, but they, they are very beautiful, some of them. You can see here it's a cormorant, a cormorant skull. So there are they mostly seabirds? They're mostly seabirds. So I have a common raven here. It's not a seabird. And there's some Oh, it's got a little <laughs> Yeah, there's some feathers from from this from the skin I have just put there. So what does the bill of the birds tell you about uh, Yeah, they they, can, they tell me that at least those with the long, narrow, thin, pointed bill live from fish. fish. Like this one. This is a thick-billed myrrh. That's a thick-billed myrrh, yes. Yeah. So they have this kind of... This is a penguin. Oh, 
wow. A, a, king, a pink queen, king penguin from um, somewhere South Georgia. Some where. of the South. Uh, I haven't been there islands. myself, but I got it from a friend. But how how come its bill, bill is so different? It doesn't have. It's still long. It, or, you know, it's, it, it's because it's it's removed. It's removed. Okay. Yeah. It's so it good. should also be. It black. should have it. Yeah. Here's a heron. You can see a long, narrow, thin bill again. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then the birds, like the fulmars, which are more opportunistic. This is, this is, this is a fulmar. It lives from, from also from fish, but also many other items it finds on the sea surface. Mm -hmm. It even lives from uh, jellyfish. Yeah, yeah. You can see them lying around the jellyfish in the mm -hmm. surface and just picking the, the jelly from, <laughs> from them. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. And you have a duck? I have a duck. I have a common eider here, yes. Oh, that's an eider. That's eider an eider duck, duck yes. So it has a very different b uh, bill compared to the fish-eating species. It's flat and it's it's um, with this very strong nail in, in the tip. And it, it mainly lives from small mussels and mm -hmm. invertebrates from the seabed. They Can you crack them open? With no, they cannot feet? crack them because they, they swallow them, f uh, in the entire uh, mussels. And then they, they have um, uh, uh, grit in, in the stomach, which they crush the, the muscles with the grit. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. You can actually see the grit from a common eider stomach right here. This is grit from the com from a common eider stock. Uh, common eider. That is uh, in stomach. their stomach. That's from the stomach of common eider. Yes. So these are the stones that are found in the stomachs yes. of the common eider. Yes. They in one stomach. In one stomach. Yes. No. They have that many stones <laughs> yes. in one stomach. And that's for crushing mussels and uh, sea urchins and animals like that. And they're huge. And what is this? These wings. There. These wings are the wings of a gold, no, a white-tailed eagle, also from Greenland. We received a lot of white-tailed eagles to from the Greenland Institute on Natural Resources some years ago, to which was found dead, and they had just been uh, collected by the institute up there, and then they sent them down here to us because we wanted to analyze them for contaminants. And so, do we know why they died? Yes, we do. we know that some of them were shot. Okay. So uh, illegally, shot. illegally, yes, mm. and some of them was found dead just on the on the ground. Probably they they might have been uh, uh, lead poisoned because they eat of often eat uh, items which are shot, mm -hmm. and half that you know, and they when they in, uh, ingest uh, lead pellets, they may be um, uh, lead contaminated. Ooh, lead poisoning. Lead poisoned, yes. So the 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 eiders get shot by yeah. the hunters, yes, and but it, they're, they're they're not picked up exactly and because they, they don't find them. Yeah, or if they do not die, if they just are weak, okay. uh, are, are flying off with, with, but they are often weak then. Yeah, and and a very easy target for the eagles. You and know. so the eagles eat the birds that yeah. have been shot yes. with lead yes. pellets, yes. and then they get. Lead, lead poison. poisoning yes. from yeah. eating birds that yeah, have been shot exactly. by lead. Yeah, exactly. I, I have heard that uh, common, the common loons oh, yeah, in, 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 in the in northern the Canada yeah. have the same problem. Okay. They are eating um, fishermen's lures. That's right. That yes. Are, yes. That yeah, are yeah. lead. Yeah. yeah. And they yeah, also yeah. get le lead poisoning yeah. from yeah. from the lures. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, we have two wings here. Yeah. Yep. Wow, it's Eagle a wings. huge yeah. bird. It is certainly. Absolutely massive. It's very closely related to the bald eagle of the North America. Uh, okay, yeah. it's closely related to the bald eagle. Yeah. It's a little, it's slightly bigger than the bald eagle. It is actually bigger than yeah. the bald eagle? Yeah. Wow. What a massive mm -hmm. bird. So, um, Oh, this is the bat that was that's a bat which freeze dried. <laughs> it's freeze dried. It's a serotine bat. It's one of the biggest bats here in Denmark. It's a Danish bat. It's a Danish bat. Yes, yes. Oh. I found it in my garden with a broken with a broken wing, oh. and it just died. And then I t talked to to Siga down here in our lab, and she said, "Let's try and freeze dry it." So how come it's not decomposing? Now that it's freeze dried, be, be, because it's, it's it's completely dry. It's, it's so yeah, dry yeah, that there's yeah. no bacteria. That there's can... nothing else, n n no moisture in it anymore. 
face. So what do they eat, these bats? Oh, they eat insects, all kinds of flying insects. Insects. Yeah. So we like them because they eat mosquitoes. Yeah, and they eat also the big moths and flying beetles and so on. Yeah. yeah. And I see, if I go a little bit higher up hmm? the ceiling... Oh, you see uh, the baleen, yes. The baleen. From, from a bowhead whale. From a bowhead whale. whale. So yeah. this, yeah. how did you get your hand on this? Yes, I, we, I f actually found it on the beach in, in, in West Greenland. Yeah. And then I and I applied for taking it back, back home because it's... Um, you know, the CITES convention, you cannot take anything from CITES animals out of the country. Mm -hmm. So I applied for a permission to do it, and I got it. Because we can use it for educational purposes. Yes, such as right now. Such as right now, yeah. So this is a, the baleen of a whale. So this yeah. is what they use to filter... To filter the plankton from the water, yes. They engulf a huge amount of water, and they filter the plankton with... The, with the baleen. And it really looks like hair. And you said yeah. you've been working on whales as well? Yes. What, what no, kind I've of work? Been, yes. You know, when we do the seabird surveying, we also uh, record all the marine mammals we see. And I have been writing a p uh, some papers about bowhead whales and their occurrence in, 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 in East Greenland. So you're looking mostly at the, the distribution? Yeah, distribution of the and the occurrence. Yes, and abundance and so on. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And what are these feathers? You have feathers everywhere. <laughs> I have feathers everywhere. They are most <laughs> Clearly a bird lover. Yes, yes. This is again a uh, white-tailed eagle feather. Oh wow, they do have gigantic feathers. And, well. and snowy owl feathers. Snowy owl? Snow, yeah. Do they have snowy owls in Greenland? Oh yes, in, in, in East Greenland we have snowy owls. Yeah. You know, they live from lemmings. And lemmings are only found in East Greenland. So that's where the snowy owls also uh, I found. So they're specialized on lemmings? They're specialized on lemmings, They yes. can't eat anything else? Oh yeah, they can eat seabirds and they can oh. eat uh, rabbits and whatever, but they cannot f f feed their, their their chicks with anything else than, than lemmings. And this is years of work? Yes, reprints. Reprints. And copies, whatever. Yeah. Some of it, uh, your own publications? Yes, they are mainly in the white cupboard over there. Oh, they're stored away. Yeah. yeah.